is Monday, April the 24th, 2017, and this is your Barbados Today afternoon update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, some public schools may not be ready to resume classes when the new term opens on Wednesday. This concern has been expressed by President of the Barbados Union of Teachers, Pedro Shepard. Of particular worry to the union is the St. Lawrence Primary School in Christchurch, which had been affected by environmental problems last term brought on by the recent South Coast sewage leaks. As a result, a BUT team will be touring that school this afternoon. Shepard said some other schools may have to delay their scheduled reopening. I'm sure that we are going to get some complaints of schools not being quite ready. Um, I understand one or two of them might have been um, industrially clean during the holidays and as usual toward the end of the holiday. So it might not be totally right in terms of remnants of scents and so on from the cleaning materials. Um, we're also going to be visiting St. Lawrence tomorrow because they would have had some challenges last term and those challenges seem not to have been um, dealt with totally. Tourism Minister Richard Seeley says Barbados doesn't need any more jobs that would increase the cost of government. Speaking to a St. Philip South constituency branch meeting at Bel Air yesterday, Seeley wants to see greater focus on jobs in the tourism sector. We are a tourism-based economy. Therefore, moving the room stock at closer and closer to 9,000, or possibly even 10,000 in the longer mm -hmm. run, is essential if we are going to continue to create sustainable jobs and in essence continue to see the economy grow and continue to see the quality of life improve for all of our people. And, and that is what we are doing as a government. And, and so the strategy of taking the lead on Sam Lords and facilitating sandals, facilitating the sands in Worthing, which is supposed to be finished later on this year as well. Of course, Sugar Bay is already on stream. The Hyatt is also supposed to start as well pretty soon. Um, all of these rooms then give us more jobs and the type of jobs we want. We do not need any more jobs where we're simply um, increasing the costs of government. This country's heritage tourism, meanwhile, has received a major boost with the handing over yesterday of the synagogue redevelopment project in the city. Minister of Culture Stephen Lashley told the ceremony that Barbados must therefore take advantage of its heritage designation and not be caught napping. Many cities across the world and sections within cities face the challenge of maintaining their priceless built heritage. The wheels of commerce are moving to other parts, lowering the level of hustle and bustle, and limiting the hours during which our city is occupied. Bridgetown, of course, is no exception. However, solutions are being found to bring life back into the cities, and these solutions are being birthed through projects such as this one, which we are witnessing this evening. Buildings are being restored and repurposed, as some of the buildings forming part of the synagogue redevelopment project will be. This is largely due to the growth of heritage tourism. The city itself becomes an attraction. The synagogue redevelopment project creates a multi-purpose attraction for historic Bridgetown and its garrison, and certainly enhances its appeal to visitors and locals alike. Deputy General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union, Dwayne Paul, and two other people this morning escaped with their lives following a three-vehicle smash-up on the ABC Highway. A car driven by Paul was extensively damaged, but he came out unscathed. One of the other two vehicles, driven by a female, overturned in a ditch, while the third, driven by a male, was badly damaged in the collision. Police said none of these two was injured in the accident that occurred along the stretch of highway between Dighton Griffith Secondary School and the Newton Roundabout. A local pastor has told the opposition Barbados Labour Party it must be guided by the principles of the founding fathers. Delivering the sermon yesterday at the 79th anniversary of the BLP, 
senior pastor of the Kayfield Wesleyan Holiness Church, Dr. Beverly Lashley, therefore advised the party to earn the trust of the people. What is your mission in this society? To make a better life for all. Be challenged by their philosophies and foundational principles of social and economic revolutions and make them applicable to the current day and common man. Jesus as the light presented a character revolution as the party with the beacons for the times present a conscience revolution which is necessary to prepare the people to be reliable and responsible workers which is a necessary ingredient for the great task ahead of moving this country forward for character springs out from conscience and as revealers of light you are needed to illuminate this society's darkened pathways the brightness of your light is ultimately a character issue your word must be your bond and people must trust you. There's regional and international news after this short break. Who call and get your yarns and potatoes? Wait, my girl, oh, you want soup for long? I can't how you keep it, but you don't sell any nation paper no more. But that paper is selling, they must know it stop selling that. Look, one time I wouldn't make a little dollar on the Sunday sun. But when Sunday night, I'm still trying to get the weather there. <laughs> but you know you can't call that the Sunday sun no more. You're going to call that sunset news. At no time down you stay. People complain that them ain't got nothing in it to read and the price keep going up all the time, all the time. A woman views me so sick the other day, telling me that she does read Barbados and they are alive for free. Mm -hmm. I can take that abusing soul, so I switch to my potatoes and yams. Well, let me tell you, if pork selling, you got to raise pigs. How much for the yams? Four cents, if I say it's a pound. Oh, but that's cheaper than that stale news. Give me. How much you want? A pound. Only a pound? Anyhow, these eating real good. Let me wrap them up for you. Come. The Barbados Today. News you can trust. We are back with news from the region now. In Trinidad, the tables have turned. The United National Congress is now asking how much has the People's National Movement Administration spent on investigations into alleged corruption in the state sector. According to MP Dr. Rudal Munilal, it could be as much as $20 million. Dr. Munilal alleges since 2015, the Rowley administration has spent more than $20 million on audits into state institutions. In a release, Dr. Munilal said the government has so far paid $18.15 million and will pay another $1.9 million soon. Dr. Munilal asked whether the firm which conducted the audits has close ties to a government minister and whether there was competitive bidding in the selection of the auditing company. But Attorney General Faris Al-Rawi is dismissing his claim, saying, quote, Dr. Munilal has been known for serious exaggeration and has a penchant for calling fishes fouls, end quote. Mr. Al-Rawi says it is true that investigations have been launched, but he does not accept any of the figures presented. He called on Dr. Munilal to bring evidence. And on the international scene, Francis outgoing President Francois Hollande today urged people to back centrist Emmanuel Macron in a vote to choose his successor next month and reject far-right leader Marine Le Pen, whose place in the runoff represented what she called a risk for France. Macron and Le Pen, leader of the National Front, go head-to-head -head on May the 7th after taking the top two places in Sunday's first round. They'd feared an earthquake, but France emerged from the first round of voting in the presidential election relatively unscathed. Centrist candidate Emmanuel Macron is now, in theory, on course for a big win in two weeks' time. His far-right opponent, Marine Le Pen, should be firmly trounced as the majority of the beaten parties put their weight behind Macron. He is essentially France's version of Obama. It's almost like Western politics as normal, the fact that he's got in. I think the expectation now is that, you know, he is going to just walk this election and the markets are really saluting it. Money markets have even priced in a higher chance of an earlier than expected rise in ECB interest rates. They may have ideally favoured conservative Francois Fillon, but Macron is an acceptable second best. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadastoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, our screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.